Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley were the best of friends since their early days in the NBA. They may be fierce competitors on the court, but they were best buddies off it. Born three days apart and drafted in the same year in 1984, Jordan and Barkley were like brothers. They were almost inseparable during the 1992 Barcelona Olympics where they were teammates in the Dream Team. They were shown in commercials and the love and respect between the two were evident whenever they were together. To say you're like brothers? Yo, I'm only, what, three days he older? He says he's my older brother, but he's only three days older. Uh -huh. three days older. You know, that's what he always says. Who's they... the wiser? <laughs> I know when to eat, when not to eat. <laughs> no, I'm not. Charles, you are a role model. I'm out of here. Bye-bye. Hey, Mike, I got my own shoe. With my own initials on it. Yeah, well, I have my own shoes with my own name on it. Well, can you do this in your shoe, Mr. So I don't play anymore? Yeah, but I don't have to. I'm retired. I'm not. And my shoes got this strap. Laces. Black. White. White. Swimpy. And you can't keep it clean. Size 13. 16. Ooh. Thank you. Yeah. Mine's got more. I went ball first. Did not. Now, they weren't talking with each other for more than a decade. I think we've only been in the same room like three times in the last 25 years, Barkley said in a recent interview. And it all started with Barkley's criticisms of Jordan about his performance as the Charlotte Hornets owner. Jordan became the majority owner of the Charlotte Hornets after buying majority shares from Bob Johnson back in 2010. He then reacquired the Hornets moniker from New Orleans after the latter decided to rename their team Pelicans in 2013. Jordan was previously the president of basketball operations of both the then Bobcats and the Washington Wizards. Unfortunately, being the greatest basketball player of all time doesn't automatically make you the greatest GM or team owner. Michael, with all of his accomplishments as a basketball player, has failed terribly in his foray as GM and owner. During the time of Jordan being president of basketball of both the Wizards and the Hornets, both teams suffered abysmal records on the court because of bad front office decisions. They have also missed a lot of opportunities to rebuild when they missed great players in a given year's draft when they held lottery picks such as the time that Jordan picked Kwame Brown as the number one overall pick over the likes of Pau Gasol, Tony Parker, Tyson Chandler, Zach Randolph, and Gilbert Arenas. Or how he picked Kimba Walker, although not a bad player, over the likes of future Hall of Famers Kawhi Leonard, Klay Thompson, and Jimmy Butler in the 2011 draft. Or how he picked Cody Zeller over the likes of Giannis Antetokounmpo and Rudy Gobert in the 2013 draft. And Barkley didn't mince words criticizing his former best buddy's performance both as president and owner. What I said about Michael, I said, I don't know if he's ever going to be successful because of the people around him. I think he hires too many of his friends. Uh, and because your friends don't ever tell you no. And we haven't spoken since that night, and that was probably close to 10 years ago. Mm. For Barkley, who makes a living sharing his unvarnished opinions as an analyst on the Emmy Award-winning show Inside the NBA, there is no room for double standard. Barkley said that he would have zero credibility if he criticized other people, but not his best friend. And Jordan, being the greatest player ever, doesn't give him the right to be a jerk. He said that if their relationship is ever to be mended, the first move should come from Jordan. Barkley's proclivity for sharing exactly what's on his mind began when he was still a young NBA player. Drafted by the Philadelphia 76ers in the 84 draft, it didn't take long for him to become as famous for his quotable words as for his ferocious rebounding. All of the guy that you would be playing there and I don't know anything about Angola, but Angola's in trouble. How did you feel in 1972 when the Soviet Union beat the United States in that wild game? Well, I had just flunked my entrance exam in the kindergarten, so I really, that was the only thing. Please tell me that you would cheat on the golf course. I just want to win. I don't care about, <laughs> I don't really care about if they say I cheated or not. The most important thing is to win. You should know that. Sure, Andy, yeah. Well, it depends on how much money I'm playing for. Like if I'm playing with the Paupers, I'm a legit 12. Yeah, yeah. If I'm playing with Michael Jordan, those rich guys, I'm a 15 or a 20. So how's your political career coming along? Are you just you gonna go into uh, politics well, or Well, I'm gonna see how the impeachment thing turn out before, because I know I got a lot of skeletons in my closet, so I gotta see how the impeachment thing works. <laughs> <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta slow my roll. I gotta see what happened to Slick Willie. Hey, man, man, Slick, hey, 
Hey, if Bill Clinton... If he can get away with it, well, then I'm running. <laughs> so what do you think about... What do you think about Charles running for office? What do you think about... And this outspokenness led Charles to speak his mind about MJ's management performance on national TV. Barkley shared that upon hearing of his criticisms, Jordan called him and said many unquotable words to him. He went ballistic. And he called me and... <laughs> Uh, that's the last thing I heard was uh, my supposed to be my boy and blah, blah, blah. And I said, man, man, I got to do my job. And they haven't spoken to each other since that night. The crack in the two's once solid friendship was very evident during the NBA 75 anniversary celebration in Cleveland when Jordan almost greeted everybody else but Barkley. A lot of media and sports personalities have differing opinions on who's at fault and who should apologize first. Some said Barkley was in the wrong. Others said it was MJ. Act of your criticism, an opportunity to somehow change it. You know, if, if you wrote something critical, if there was an, uh, a, a, a story coming out in a publication, something critical about, about somebody, and they sent it to them first, you would think, well, are they going to get to proofread it? This is, but I, the way I feel about it, because I have relationships with people in the business that sometimes I have to criticize, is that if I call that person, because we're close, and I say, look, this is what I'm going to say about you. Hell no, he should not do that. And if you do, I will lose respect for him. I would lose respect for Barkley. As Max just pointed out, that's his job. Like many, many years. He's absolutely right. Charles Barkley and I are friends. And Shaq and I are like brothers. I'm very, very tight with everybody. And I know MJ. And... I'm not going to go into who I've spoken to, but y'all can imagine who I've spoken to when I drop the details that I'm about to drop to you. Lockout short in season 2011-2012. The Charlotte Bobcats are 7-59. and 59. The following year, they're 21-61, and 61, right? Because it's a lockout short in season. That's why they were 7-59 the first go-round. They were god-awful. There were decisions that Barkley felt he had to speak on that MJ may have made, whether it was the drafting of Michael Gill, you know, Kid Gilchrist, or, you know, Gerald Henderson with Bismarck Biombo and these boys being on the team, et cetera, et cetera. I know Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is a big boy. Michael Jordan can take somebody being critical of him. He requires two things. Number one, that you know what you're talking about when you give details. And number two, if y'all are tight, Pick up the phone and call me first. You have access to me. You have inside information. One of the things that I did, if you remember, I went off about Carmelo Anthony in the Olympics. And I said, I want to hear anything about Olympic gold medal. I want the chip because of the reports that were out there. I had to come on the air, Will, and apologize. You know why I had to apologize? Because Melo was saying that the quotes misrepresented his position. But more importantly, he was saying, you have access to me. Why didn't you call me? The only reason I didn't text him is because he was in Rio, and I thought I couldn't reach him. He said, why would you think you couldn't reach me? That's what, that, that, Of course you could reach me. So my point to you is that Barkley, love Barkley. He does have a job. But at the same time, in this position, you make decisions every day. People who I know, that's one of the reasons it's very, very difficult for me to say things about a lot of players. Like, it was very, very difficult for me to say something about Kobe. You know why? I better know what the hell I'm talking about because Kobe gonna call me or Kobe gonna text me. What the hell was that? Because he's giving you access to him where you don't have to give false information or incomplete information. Barkley has a relationship or had a relationship close enough with Michael Jordan where Michael Jordan should not have turned on the TV and found out what you were going to say before you called him. And in that regard, He's right. But regardless of everything that's been said in the media and the public, this grade of a friendship should not simply end this way. Not like this. No matter how much both of them were hurt at the time. Yes, Jordan and Barkley are two hard-headed, very competitive individuals on and off the court, but one simple fight, especially one that you cannot even describe as a friendship-ending event, wastes years of friendship and brotherhood. They never badmouthed each other in the media the way Scottie Pippen besmirched MJ's reputation nowadays. As Kenny Smith eloquently said about the reason why Michael and Chuck haven't patched things up until now boils down only to one thing. 
practice? Well, I think the one thing that uh, Charles and both Michael have is a lot of pride. And it shouldn't be the reason why Michael and Chuck wouldn't be able to repair their friendship. Especially now that Michael has already sold the Hornets. It's probably a very touchy subject to MJ because of how the Hornets were losing at the time of his ownership and he was not used to it. And Chuck, with all his truthfulness and good intentions, should have had those conversations done in private with his friend. But as the passing of Kobe Bryant taught many people this time is never promised. Every day is never guaranteed. And the two of them shouldn't let pride continue to become a major hindrance in repairing what once was a very beautiful friendship. No matter who's at fault. And no matter how hard it is for both of them.